So the Aorus Pro series is one of the best motherboards I have ever reviewed, regardless of its chipset. And if you're a returning viewer, you already know this. The manufacturer, its raw power, its attention of detail, all and for all is just a beautifully engineered product. And it's a, supposed to be a wide spectrum motherboard, uh, being the best at whatever it does, ranging from gaming to video editing to what have you, and the B550 version attempts to deliver the same performance level as that premium manufacturer at a severely decreased price tag. And unfortunately, despite being all of those, I'm still having serious doubts about this board. Now, today we are reviewing the B500 Iris Pro from Gigabyte, the reference board for hundreds of billions of gamers around the world. Billions, and fun fact for you, Gigabyte in French translates to enormous Quack. Now, ours is a pro gamer enthusiast branding of Gigabyte. It's all about power delivery and a feature rich experience. Now, nothing is left aside, starting from the overly powerful VRM, ending with one of the very best integrated audio solution in the world, which will make a dedicated solution blush. Now, the Pro Series sits comfy right in the middle of our uh, gaming range and usually is the most balanced board of them all at still somewhat of a mid-range pricing. And frankly talking, the B550 chipset is kind of a soft ball for ours because it's allowing a cheaper manufacturer without sacrificing any of the excellence of the board and despite all of this again i have serious doubt and, and i do have some serious issues with it now starting with the obvious we are dealing with a six pcb layered atx motherboard and right there having six pcb layers is a big deal because it allows perfect pcie 4.0 support stronger signal isolation a better vrm heat dissipation a must for a durable and stable motherboard. It is powered by an AM4 CPU socket supporting both the third and incoming fourth, or whatever they're gonna call it, uh, generation of Ryzen CPU. In other words, PCIe 4.0 only processors, which is important since this is where our board PCIe 4.0 enabled uh, components will be sourcing their superior bandwidth level. And just a kind reminder, PCIe 4.0 uh, delivers twice the avail available bandwidth of its retiring and predeceding PCIe 3.0 standard. Obviously, a major performance boost in your day-to-day -day computing. In the RM wise well, that's where the Aorus usually shines, and the B550 series is no exception. We have 1450 amps power stages organized in a 7V core configuration, thanks to its PWM doublers. That, that's a total of 700 amps worth of power, 600 of which are CPU-centric. That is obviously more than you'll ever need to power an even severely overclock uh, whatever processor AMD can produce in the next coming two years. So yeah, we're golden. But most importantly, this is one of the most efficient and, and ice cool VRM I have ever encountered. It never went beyond 53 degrees Celsius, even with a severely overclocked high core count processor. So bottom line, best VRM of its class. Absolutely mind blowing. And to achieve this kind of heat efficiency, the VRM has a few things going for it. First, we have several power stages, which greatly helps in heat efficiency by spreading the CPU power load on a wider area. And of course, that absolutely gorgeous heavy two blocks heat pipe linked VRM heatsink. It has this premium top of its league Finare main block, providing an indecent amount of radiating surface. And just here and there, Gigabyte, I've given the B550 Hours Pro a convergence of feature which really supports it in delivering one of the most powerful and cool or, or, or hit efficient VRM on the market available today. So. Uh, gigantic engineering expensive kudos to gigabyte for this memory wise the b550 hours pro supports up to 128 gigabyte of ddr4 ram in a dual channel configuration clocking up to an indecent 5.4 gigahertz far surpassing its more expensive x570 big brother now obviously not all of us going to go at 5 gigahertz and above on ram stick especially knowing that usually these speeds are really 
for a single RAM stake and well, um, but most importantly for the people who are going to go for 32, 64, 128 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, it means that they'll be able to reach higher than usual clock count, anywhere between 3.6 and 4 gigahertz and stay there stably, which is a, a very important point for video editing. Um, other than heavy gaming, and, and definitely something will impact your day-to-day -day, uh, computing performances. Big memory kudos, two hours for this. Now, taking a closer look at our B550 chipset. Since our CPU takes care of the PCIe 4.0 heavy lifting to feed our most uh, performant components, the chipset can comfortably remain PCIe 3.0 standard without slowing down our build. It also means that our chipset is much cooler. It'll be able to run at 6 watts instead of the X570 11 watt we saw on its bigger siblings. As a result, we got a PCIe 4.0 enabled motherboard. In the same time, we have a cheaper manufacturing since we do not need, need an active uh, cooling solution for the chipset. And all in for all, it's just a more stable solution. And that is a balanced act if I ever seen one, mis sombreros. Staying in the memory, we have two PCIe M.2 solid state drive sticks which can swap usually data up to 32 gigabit per second. But since our CPU fed M.2 solid state drive support PCIe 4.0 standard, oh <laughs> magic, if you have a PCIe 4.0 M.2 solid state drive, it will be able to swap up to a mind blowing 64 gigabit per second. So if you ever wanted to boot from an M.2 solid state drive, this is exactly where I would place it. In both cases, M.2 solid state sticks get really hot really quickly. Fortunately, we have this beautifully long and thick hit things, which I have to mention, I have a beautiful finish. And look at this beautiful sanded paint. Great, great texture. Staying in the storage section, quickly mentioning the presence of our usual somewhat obsolete but eh, reliable 6 SATA 3.0 plugs, which all of you know I'm not a big fan of, but it's here. I'm trying to behave it. It's reliable, okay? Export-wise, we have five PCIe exports, two bachelors, which, <laughs> because it's single and single speed, I call it bachelor. Three 16 slots with different speeds, and as usual, only the closest one to your CPU can run up to 16 PCIe 4.0 lanes, which is quite fast, and it's double the standard of the usual PCIe 3, remember that. Therefore, this is where you'd want your video card installed for optimal performances, hence the metallic reinforcement. Our second and third 16 slots are capped individually at two and four PCIe 3.0 standard, so really, really slow, not suitable for video cards, hence the absence of metallic reinforcement. But that is where all my problem is with this motherboard. This is supposed to be a pro series, so something that uh, you know is used as well for video editing or, or double GPU gaming or whatever you want to call it. And um, I, I don't understand how we're smooth on this one because usually all the processors I've reviewed had dual uh, or had a proper dual GPU support. And even though this is going to be great for gaming, this is only going to be great for gaming. And so a limitation which is in my view unacceptable coming from ours. Bakayo wise, first let me know the presence of a Bakayo plate, which is rather premium and a welcome feature. Now, starting from the left, we have six USB second generation plugs, so no PS2 nonsense, uh, Gigabyte has chosen instead of reinforcing it, its USB peripheral presence, which I absolutely support and adore. We have one HDMI display output for Vega integrated graphics. Now, worth mentioning, this is 2.1 standard, which is very good news, since it's gonna be able to deliver up to 4K at 60 frames per second. And even though on third generation, this is not relevant, but on, on the incoming Ryzen, Renoir integrated graphic CPU generation. Well, that was long. It's gonna take. It's gonna. It's gonna make sense. Next, we have three USB third generation plugs, a CPU flashback button for CPU less BIOS recovery or update option, which is always important, especially on enthusiast motherboards. So. A uh, small, you know, integrated or whatever CPU flash, kudos to ours. Three 10 gigabit USB plugs, including a type C, a 2.5 gigabit per second LAN, which is a sizable upgrade when you compare it to its previous B450 generation, which we only feature, which only featured a gigabit. So yeah, very happy to see this. And finally, and thankfully, we got our premium eight channel ALC 1220 VB 
audio codec from Realtek. And not only is this the best codec money can buy on the integrated market, but the, it really takes full advantage of the six PCB layers because both left and right audio channel have been traced on individual PCB sheets, uh, reinforcing its insulation and, and decreasing static uh, interferences. But where the Pro really brings it home is with its WIMA capacitors. The, these studio graded capacitors are usually only present on gigabyte and higher tier MSI boards, and they are a big deal. They do an amazing job at insulating and rendering about the clearest sound, purest bass you'll ever, ever hear. In short, whenever you see those red caps on the motherboard, right away, you know, you know, you're gonna have pure gold chocolate in the ear. Sounds gross and painful, doesn't it? Overall, our back I.O. is rather premium and what I expected from an Aros Pro Series for once. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, luxurious, focused and, and yeah, uh, uh, back I.O. kudos to Gigabyte for this. Moving on to our front panel connector, we have two second generation plugs, great for monitoring, a single and lonely third generation five gigabit front panel connector. I would have loved to see a second one, but most importantly, I do regret the complete utter absence of 10 gigabit uh, front panel type C connector, which I don't care what you're doing hours. If you're trying to save cost or trying to make it more affordable, don't always add a front panel type C. It's a must, there's nothing around it. It's a must, period. But I am keen to forgive this absence since I have to note the much rarer and discreet, at least on the AMD platforms, Thunderbolt connector, which promises transfer speed up to 40 gigabit per second. And I say rare because uh, Thunderbolt is an Intel proprietary feature, which usually does not integrate well with AMD powered motherboards. And the fact that ours did so shows a great effort in integration. So a big integration kudos to ours for this. Cooling wise, we have seven hybrid fan connectors. And the word hybrid really is important here because it means that each and individual connectors can support either a PWM fan, a water pump, or even a flow sensor, water flow sensor. So it really gives an unprecedented amount of agility to a motherboard, enthusiastic agility. Not only can you, can, can you go for the classic air cooling solution, but you can also go for single or dual custom water cooling solution, which is a bit crazy for this price range and uh, a, a real edge for our gigabyte because uh, so far, I've not seen any hybrid connectors on any uh, other of its competition motherboard. And I really would like to see this technology, which doesn't cost more to manufacture, bleeding out the entire industry. Troubleshooting wise, we got our easy debugger to guide us through the booting process, which is what I expected to see on a PCIe 4 enabled motherboard. Finally, this would not be a gamer motherboard without the French inspiring the American patrioting RGB nonsense that is present on this board, starting with a single RGB strip hidden under our IO roof, 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 and four RGB connectors, including two addressable ones placed in pairs at opposite end of our board for easier access. In short, if your streaming carrier never took off, and it probably won't, let's be realistic, you can still power the front hand of your back office casino with it. In conclusion, at 175 USD, the B550 Pro is about $90 cheaper than its X570 counterpart. And it's a bit awkward for me because this is a great motherboard. The VRM is amazing. Uh, the manufacturer is pre I love it. I really do love it. I mean, you heard the whole review, but it's word to word, line to line, chip to semiconductor, the copycat conform of its cheaper version, the B550 Elite, which is 30 to $40 cheaper. That's why I had such a big issue with not having a proper dual GPU uh, support on this board, because if I had that, it would make sense to pay $40 more. The incentive would be there. But right now, if you compare the, the Elite to the Pro on the B550 series, save a few peripherals, I don't see much differences. Not enough to pay uh, more money than what the Elite is worth. So we have a perfect case of product cannibalism that usually Asus is very good at. And I, yeah, um, despite being one of the best board at that price range, if you have the opportunity to buy the Elite, don't, don't bother get the Elite for cheaper. And yes, ours. next time, 
get that dual GPU uh, uh, support feature I was talking about. Get, get, get it done. 